Welcome to the Jordan and Kristen Rickard Show. The world is falling apart, but you don't have to. Join Jordan and Kristen as they discuss the challenges that face us in our decaying world every day. God has a plan for you to have victory and to be a light in the darkness. As the Bible says, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Now, here's Jordan and Kristen. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Jordan and Kristen Pray For You. We hope your, your week is going really well, and hope you and your whole family are safe and sound. Kristen's going to pray for you guys in just a moment. We've got a bunch of prayer requests we're going to get to, as always. But first, I just want to talk to you about having a healthy discontentment, which is kind of a weird topic, right? We tend to think of being discontented as a bad thing. In fact, the word itself means you're dissatisfied with something. But the truth is, discontentment can be a good thing or a bad thing. It's bad when we're not grateful for what we've been given. Being thankful is actually so important to God that it's a condition of prayer. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. So if you even want to address God and have your prayers heard, you have to do it with a spirit of thankfulness. People forget Jesus, who is God himself, actually gave thanks whenever he ate. We see this when he fed the multitude and even before the communion supper. Both times, the Bible says, before he did anything, he gave thanks, okay? So you should always be thankful, and if you're not, then that sort of discontentment is bad. But at the same time, God doesn't want you to become comfortable where you are because he always wants you to grow. He wants you to progress. He wants you to go outside of your comfort zone. And what will happen is sometimes he'll put a healthy discontentment inside of you, stirring you up, encouraging you to want more, to want better. That's the Holy Spirit telling you to get up and move forward. Now, quick disclaimer. That doesn't mean that if you're in a marriage right now and you know you're not happy with your wife, that you should be in marriage and go find someone else. And I know some of you might think, oh, I just got a word from Jordan today. No, that's not what I'm talking about, okay? But you can certainly get out of the comfort zone of that marriage, get out of the routine of it, and ask God to grow your marriage and improve it and make it a lot better. Kristen and I decided a while ago, really at the very beginning of our, rela- or our relationship, that we would never be contented with where we are in our relationship. We're always asking God to grow us and move us forward and closer to him. Healthy discontentment is why Kristen and I started this ministry. We saw that the world is suffering because of the virus, amongst other things, and, and we wanted to help. But more broadly, we saw that so many people believe in God and don't go to church because they don't get fed there. And we were dissatisfied with that paradigm and wanted to do something about it. Being discontented with being single is how Kristen and I found each other. We had both been single for seven years and praying to find someone, and we believed that God had put it on our hearts for that, okay? We weren't content with being in our comfort zones. We wanted to move out of it and into the next stages of our lives, and that's what God wanted for us as well. So we prayed for God to bring the right person. In my business, I'm constantly trying to expand and be a better attorney and serve my clients better and make the business a greater success. Those are healthy kinds of discontentments if they are put there by God. So the point is this. If you've got some kind of stirring in your life and you feel like God's causing you to move, that's a good thing, all right? We see an example of this in the Bible of healthy healthy discontentment when Jesus approaches a few of the disciples before they become disciples, and among them is Peter, and Jesus sees that they're fishing, and Jesus says, come with me, and I'll make you fishers of men. And the Bible says they immediately left their nets behind to go with Jesus because they wanted something more. When Jesus talked to the woman at the well and they were drawing water together, he says, If you drink from this water, you'll you'll thirst again. But if you drink from the water I have for you, you'll never thirst again. He was trying to stir up a healthy discontentment in her with what she had to get her to leave it and follow him. Okay, so discontentment is uncomfortable and it's not pleasant, but it's a good thing when it pushes you to want more of what God wants for you. And what God wants for you is to prosper you in all things, even as your soul prospers. All right. So don't get too comfortable. If you feel like the job you're in isn't fulfilling God's purpose in your life or or your relationships aren't what you want them to be, or maybe your health needs to improve, instead of settling for less than what God has for you, instead instead of staying in that safe comfort zone, yeah, be thankful for what you have, but be even more thankful for what God has planned for you. Yield your will to his and get ready for him to do a new work in your life. That's my message for you tonight. Very, very awesome, Jordan. You know, I was thinking about how 
we we talked about the other night how neither one of us or nobody listening is perfect and how much easier life would be if we just had that attitude of i'm in a health a place of healthy discontent not whining and god why are you doing this and then we're his will is blocked by the noise and realizing that stirring is actually causing God wants us to move forward and wants us to feel that stirring. So having the stirring is not wrong, but sometimes we just whine instead. And then we just go around in circles until God's like, I'm waiting over here. (laughs) Or what's worse. And this is what I found in my life is that I got way too comfortable for too long. And you find that when you're just standing still like that, you're actually moving backwards because the rest of the world's moving forward. Okay. That's you know, right. time, the, the amount of time we have on this earth to make an impact is finite. And, you know, we have certain windows of opportunity that happen in our lives that we wind up missing. So, you know, I can say that a message like this is near and dear to me because I got stuck in my comfort zone a little bit too long. And thank God there came a point, and you and I have spoken about this privately, yes. where, you know, God really stirred a healthy discontentment in me saying, look, this isn't what you're here for. You're not designed to have a mediocre life. I don't really think anybody is, to be honest with you. I'm just right. talking about myself right now. You're not designed to be mediocre like this. You're designed to do you know, great things, move forward, push ahead. And yeah, it's not comfortable when that happens. We like to stay in our comfort zones. That's like a safe place. But you know, there's a saying, uh, Kristen, of which I'm especially fond, that a ship is safest in harbor, but that's not why ships are made, right? And so that's even true. though we don't that's like true. being out of our comfort zone, by definition, God wants to push us out of our, our comfort zones. And I'm, I'm glad in my case that's, he did. That's right. And I think it's interesting because you and I have talked about this, that there's been parallels. Both of us were had that healthy discontent and both of us could have stayed in that comfort zone. And you and, and we kind of had like the opposite effect where I felt like I was going to move forward in action that I shouldn't take. Mm-hmm. And you felt like you were going to just not take action, but both are wrong. <laughs> so, um, so some, you know, people respond in different ways, but, but, um, you know, that's a very good point that you can, uh, if you don't go, if you're not growing forward, you're going backwards, yep. you never stay the same. So yep. important to grow. Awesome. Awesome. So, okay. So let's, uh, let's pray now and, um, see what the Lord's word that he has for us tonight. Um, Lord, I thank you, God, that you are you are such an amazing God. There is no other God. You say, don't have any other gods before me. How could we, Lord? How could we when you are everything and every need that we need and the, even the things that we don't even know that we need? You fill them all. Tonight, I feel you saying to us that you, that rest is something not that we are even just allowed to have but it's something that's your command. You want to bring us to a place of rest, God. There are so many people that are weary and you're telling them that you want them to enjoy their life and live in that place of rest. You, Lord, are the good shepherd. You satisfy the weary, God. You bind up the injured. You hold us close to your hearts, Lord. I just love that picture of you as a shepherd. God, you compare yourself to a shepherd over and over again, how we as your sheep, we lie down in your safe pastures, your safe, richly green pastures, God. And those who are far off, you, you, get, you find the strays and bring them in, God. But at the same time, you're a God of justice and you will destroy the wicked. All the people listening, God, it's, it's our job to forgive those who have done us wrong. And that's not easy. Sometimes that's really not easy. I don't know all the situations that people are facing, God, but you do. And sometimes forgiveness, it may be a person, but it also could be a situation. Or they may even be bitter against you, Lord. Help them and help all of us, Lord, to take any bitterness, whether it's a person, a situation, or we've channeled it to you, God, and lay it at the foot of the cross because, God, you are God of justice. How beautiful is it that you are this God that is so tender, so sweet, so protective, so perfect in that way, so giving us rest and and a place and a refuge. But at the same time, with that gentle spirit, you have this other side of you that protects us and You have justice and you are destroying the plans of the enemy with your power. You are not weak. 
you will never grow faint. Even though we feel faint sometimes, Lord, you will never, never get tired. You will never fall short, Lord. Your arm is not too short to reach anyone, God. You increase the power of the weak. It says in your word, even those who don't have any strength at all, you give them strength. You give supernatural strength. People listening tonight need supernatural strength, Lord. They're going through things they don't know the answers to, God, but you know. And they need your wisdom and they need your strength, God, to endure what's, what's ahead, Lord, to give them comfort and peace. God, sometimes it seems like you're so close. And other times it seems like it's hard to hear you, Lord. I pray for every person who feels that it's hard to hear you right now, that you would just reveal yourself to them in an amazing, fresh, new way, God. God, you're a God of newness and you have new, beautiful plans for each person, God. Reveal yourself, God. Scoop them up in your arms, God. Show them that picture of you as their shepherd, Lord the shepherd of their lives, the shepherd of their families that they feel are par- falling apart, the shepherd of, of all the situations, God. You've got the whole world in your hands, Lord. It's amazing how when we sing songs as little kids in church, it becomes a new meaning. The simplistic message has a new meaning. The fact that you hold the whole world in your hands, God. You hold all of our hopes and dreams and fears and everything, God, in the palm of your hands. We can never escape you, God. We can never fall away from you so far that you you can't reach us, God. But I just picture that you are holding, you are holding your sheep, God. Each one of the peop- the precious people listening, Lord. Lord, if Jordan and I read these prayer requests and we feel touched and we feel just for people that we don't even know that live close by or on the other side of the world, how much more do you love them, God? How much more do you love us? How much more do you have a plan and a hope for our future? How much more do you shepherd us, God, and protect us, Lord? You're a father to the fatherless, Lord. You're a husband to the widow, God. You are close to the brokenhearted, and your promises are true. When you promise to bind up the brokenhearted, when you promise to give us strength to replace the tired, weary soul with new strength, new excitement, new life, new abundance. God, you'd never called any of us to live in an existence where we're just struggling through life, where we're just trying to keep our head above water. God, I pray against that spirit right now. I pray against that for families that feel they're in constant lack, whether that be in health or division or anything, Lord, you have called for us to have enjoyment and and to live in your prosperity and to live in the palm of your hand. God, I pray that they would know Lord, that we would know that you are on the throne in our lives, God, and that you are turning around situations and you are making a way, though your footprints remain unseen, God, you are making a way. We give you all the credit and the honor and the glory and the praise, God. Lord, we ask for healings, Lord. I ask for healings around this world, Lord. Lord, this is the time. This is your time, God. I feel it. I feel that you're, you, there's a revival springing up, that people are are being healed from the inside out, that mental, emotional wounds, Lord, that weariness is, is, is falling off and your spirit, they're putting on the robe of your spirit of righteousness, God, that people who are, who are in sick beds are going to rise up, that people who are brokenhearted are, are going to find you, God, and that, that people who are far from you are going to come to know you as their Lord, Lord. The people, the prodigal son is returning home, the prodigal daughter, those with the addictions, Lord, are turning to you, God. God, we proclaim it. We, we proclaim that you are come, you are over this earth, Lord. This whole entire earth, Lord. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. And we proclaim and know that that's happening now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Great job, Kristen, as always. Whoops. Where'd Kristen go? I know, but I, I, there you are. Okay. Got you back up. <laughs> 
All right, so let's do our specific prayer requests. Uh, we get more prayer requests than we can get to verbally in a night, but we put a bunch of them down on the bottom of the screen. We ask that everybody please join in agreement with these. Uh, we're going to get to some of them right now, though. So Hale says, please pray for me that God will give me a home. All right, so, so Hale, I mentioned this one time. When I was praying for God to bring me a home, what I did is I went out and I bought a keychain, which is very easy to find online. It costs about $3. And on the keychain, there's a, a shape of a house on it. So it's like a home keychain. And the idea is whenever I pick my keys up, I can look at that house and say, God, thank you that you're going to put my house key on this keychain. All right. And so I recommend you do something very similar to that. Now, last time, by the way, somebody sent in a prayer request about a home. I pulled out my keychain and what it looked like on video, because it was in my pocket, it looked like I was uh, putting my hand down my pants. Okay. I was not putting my hand down my pants. It's just the way it looked. And I was sitting on the couch at Kristen's house. And that's just, <laughs> you know, I was wearing jeans and the jeans were a little tight. And so I had to angle myself, but I was just going to my pocket. So I'm not going to make that mistake again. Just trust me when I'm telling you about the keychain. Okay. <laughs> um, but seriously, get something like that and just thank God or get a picture of the house you want. And just, I'm not in the name it and claim it thing. I'm not saying God's going to give you that exact house. But what I am saying is you need to just start to focus on it and thank God for giving you a home every day, okay? All right. Peter, and I read this one uh, in our inbox, said, could use some prayer for sure. I'm in a really dark place right now, mentally and emotionally. Well, God calls us to be a light in this world, Peter. And so when you're in darkness right now, you're in a place that God doesn't want you to be. He wants to pull you out of that. The Bible talks about there being an actual spirit of heaviness. And I feel like that's really what's characterizing your, your life right now. So first of all, Peter, we're going to agree with you in Jesus' name that God pulls you out of that darkness, whatever it is. If it's a, a spiritual warfare, we pray victory over it. If you're just going through a bad stretch in your life or, I don't know, something's wrong with your family, your job or something like that, we pray God remedies it. We just pray that you grab his hand and walk with him. I think was it Micah 6, 8 that says, uh, seek justice, love, love mercy, and always walk humbly with God. And so my prayer for you tonight, Peter, is that you walk humbly with God, that you reach out to him. I know he'll reach out to you. And if you stick around with us to the end of the episode, Kristen's going to lead us in the call to salvation. If you haven't prayed it yet, I recommend that you do it um, so that you can be part of the kingdom. And if you have done it, I recommend you pray it anyway, because it never hurts to recommit yourself. So, Peter, if you want to stay in touch with us, you're certainly welcome to do that. If you want to be more specific in your prayer requests, we'll, we'll be happy to pray more specifically for you. But for now, uh, please know that, God, we're asking you to be with Peter and not just be with him, but to lead him out of this darkness in Jesus' name. Yes. And more than that, actually, I, I pray that, God, you make Peter a light in dark places that other people have in their lives. David says, pray for me and my family to have a safe life, my sugar level control is off okay uh well that's something actually i've had experience with because as kristen knows i've had a, a couple times we've had blood sugar problems and so first of all david we pray for that we pray that god just normalizes that in you if you haven't seen a doctor about it i recommend you do that as well we always believe in seeing doctors for medical conditions of course but father god i pray that david if this is a diabetes situation then we pray that god you cure that if it's hypoglycemia we pray that you cure that situation god and uh, just bring him out of that and give him total victory in Jesus' name. Yes. And David, I would say also, don't hold on to it. Don't let it become part of you. You know, be ready to release that thing. Like, I don't accept that I have a blood sugar problem. I don't. I had. It's in the past. Um, but I also know that God regulates my blood and that I have the blood of Christ running through me. Uh, and whenever we have these health problems, I always recommend people take communion. You know, break the bread, drink the blood and all that sort of thing. And really just invite Jesus, you know, put his body into yours. Gloria says, please pray for me for God to give me a special gift for my birthday. It's This is a long prayer. The, the synopsis of it is basically this. It looks like she posted bond for her sister and her sister skipped bail or something like that. And now she's being held accountable for it. So, God, we pray that that whole situation is fixed. We pray that either this debt is forgiven or that she, she somehow that you provide the funds for her to pay it but it's obviously stressing her out. And so God, we pray that you just give her victory over this situation in Jesus name. Yes. Balza says, pray for my son in Dubai who's suffering from the coronavirus. Please pray to God. Well, God, we know that you have victory over the coronavirus. So we pray for 
for Val's son, and we pray for everybody suffering from it, and we pray for everybody being targeted by the enemy for destruction with it right now. People who haven't even been infected yet. Yes. Father God, we pray total health, safety, and healing for all of them. Even for my father who continues to work as a dentist, only seeing one or two patients here and there, but it still, you know, exposes him potentially. But God, we know that you're better than any uh, any safety mask or anything like that. And while certainly we're all encouraged to exercise good hygiene and and you know listen to the authorities on this issue and things like that, God, we also know that you are our protector. I'm reminded. I think was it not Paul Kristen who uh, was actually bitten by a, a poisonous snake and the snake yes. fell off of him and died. So that was a Father God, story. we pray. Yeah. We pray that when any of us, if if the coronavirus should come into contact with any of us, we rebuke it. But if it if it should come into contact, we pray that it dies on contact. In yes. Jesus' name. I got a few more here. Vicky says, please pray for me. I'm having surgery on Friday, May 1st to remove kidney stones and stent replacements. All right, Vicky. So in Jesus name, we pray that that surgery goes well. We pray that you just emerge from it without complications, that your recovery is very quick and that you don't have these problems again in the future. God, your word says that surely Christ bore our sicknesses and our infirmities. So God, we pray for total victory for Vicky. And we pray that she never has to encounter this again. And we pray that while she's in the hospital, that she's a great blessing to other people there. In Jesus' name. Bandana says, hello, brother and sister. I am having a problem. I just broke up with my boyfriend. I called him many times, but he's not receiving my calls. I always pray for him because I had promised to be with him till the end, but he's not serious. I just can't be able to handle myself. I know God is always with me, but day by day I'm becoming weak. I need prayer. Okay. So first of all, Vicky, uh, Vicky, sorry, Bandana, your primary relationship has to be with God, number one. Your primary relationship is not with this other person who to whom you're not married. Now, I know, by the way, that doesn't make it any easier. I mean, Kristen and I aren't married either. Um, so I'm not diminishing what you had there, but it's possible that this serves a greater purpose. I'm not saying it does or doesn't. I'm just saying it's possible, okay, that you're, you know, let's put our faith in God, not in some other person first and foremost. And even with Kristen, for as much as I love her, I always tell her I love God even more, Absolutely. okay? So that, that's number one. Um, number two, we know that God wants you to be successful in your relationships, including this relationship. And so, Father God, we pray that you give her total success that you explain to her what needs to happen, that you just comfort her. And if this person is the person she's supposed to be with, then God, I pray you restore that relationship. But if not, I pray that you just make that very clear and uh, move her on to a, a better relationship in Jesus' name. All right. Um, so Iknato says, hello from Vanatau. Basically, she says she's been teaching for three years, but she didn't get on the government payroll yet, even though she graduated from university three years ago. So I guess she's trying to get a, a government job as a teacher. So, Father God, we pray that, you know, we always need good teachers. We always need positive influences for our kids and people like that, especially those who know you. So we pray for Iknato tonight. We pray that you get her the right job at the right time for the right salary in front of the right students and that she has a massive impact on all of them. All right. And last, we're going to do Raphael here. Amen from Nigeria. Please assist me in prayer. I need a divine connection and financial prayer support. Father God, we pray for Raphael right now. We pray that you give him the divine connections that he needs, that people who right now are praying for divine connections are connected with Raphael, that he becomes a person who they're looking for and that he becomes a great light in the community, that the fact that he's in Nigeria does not mean he has to live in poverty. All these people who write us about, you know, they have financial needs in Nigeria and other parts of Africa and in, in, um, in India and Pakistan. I don't care that you live in impoverished areas, okay? You are all children of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You are royalty. You are heirs to the greatest fortune in history, okay? So you should not be living in poverty. The Bible says, I am yet to see the righteous forsaken, nor their children begging for bread. So Father God, I, on their behalf, claim blessings for them to just flood down from the heavens and overtake them 
yes. so that they will lend and not borrow, so that they will be known in their communities as the people who receive financial miracles, and when other people need to be blessed, that, the, that they go to them for the blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Marilyn Johon Johannes just wrote to us now on the, as we're live streaming. She says, I'm in Nambia. Pray for me to get a job and my son to know how to read and concentrate in his studies. All right, Marilyn, we pray for you to get a job. We pray that your son does well in school. He learns how to read and concentrates in his studies and that he uses his education to further, uh, to further the kingdom of Christ. And the same thing with your job. I pray that your job will be used to further the kingdom of Christ. And that's a high paying job that provides upward mobility. And it's the right job that God wants for you at the right time in Jesus name. All right, guys. Those are our prayer requests for tonight. And so we ask that all of you guys, please just be in agreement that God just blesses all these people, including the ones we didn't get to verbally, but you see them at the, at the bottom uh, of the screen, whether it's Chand or Ham or Eunice, Sophie, Nayla, Kumar, James, Abid, or any of the others. Father God, we pray that you just honor their prayers. You acknowledge the step, the affirmative step they took by seeking prayer in the first place, that you just meet their needs and that you just... You just come to them and just, I want you, I want these people to be able to experience you that you, like you're so real that you're basically like sitting next to them. All right. Mm -hmm. I pray the same prayer for them that I pray for myself, that you just be made so real to these people that it's just like, just like having a conversation with another person. Thank you for all these people. God, please bless them abundantly. Make them a great blessing in their communities. Let other people see the miracle work you're doing in them. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right, Kristen, well, uh, do us a favor here. Could you please uh, lead us in the call to salvation? Yes, absolutely. If you'd like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is the perfect time. Just follow after me. Dear Jesus, I admit that I have sinned. I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I make you my Lord and Savior. And I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, please let us know. Comment on the video or send us a message. We want to hear from you. And any praise report you have, any way that God has touched your life, please let us know. We want to know that too. Absolutely. All right, guys. Listen, thanks for joining us again for another episode. Please do us a favor and like and share these episodes, not just this one. We have, I think, close to 40 of these now on the Facebook page alone. Feel free to share those. It's a very easy way to get people saved and to get people fed. Kristen and I are doing all the work. All you got to do is hit the share button. And again, we don't ask for any money and we don't accept money, but we do ask that you please just try to share these things, not for our benefit, but you know, because other people benefit from it. All right. Okay, guys, look, one more day left in the week. Tomorrow's Friday, so be happy, okay? Um, we will see you tomorrow at 7.30, as we always do. It's really a pleasure to come into your homes and be part of your lives, so thank you for having us. And until tomorrow, please, as always, really be blessed and be a blessing. Bye, everybody. joining us don't forget to follow jordan and Kristen ministries on facebook youtube and itunes and remember to tune in next week and every week on tuesdays at 8 45 on wmca the mission am 570 and fm 102.3